Hey everyone, my name's Captain Jack and welcome back to my channel. This week I had the pleasure of sitting down with Marek Rosa, CEO of Keen Software House, aka the developers of Space Engineers. Now in this interview I got to ask Marek a bunch of questions which gave us some answers on where the game is right now, how Keen are coping with the current coronavirus pandemic, and also what might be on the horizon for the future of the Space Engineers brand as a whole. With some great answers in here, I'm going to let you watch this video and learn what Marek had to say, as it's definitely insightful to where Keen Software House and the game of Space Engineers is actually going for the future. Okay, so starting off with question number one, uh, as we've got in front of us here, it's been a great start to 2020 for Keen Software House, with release of obviously the Frostbite DLC, and also now the Xbox One edition of Space Engineers. Could you tell us how these have gone down? Uh, yeah, thank, thanks for the question. So the Frostbite and the Xbox release went well, I would say according to our expectations and was received or were both received well by players. So that is good. And uh, the Frostbite, because it introduces the campaign, it's also learning lesson for us that players actually want this kind of experience in space engineering. So that's good, you know, to confirm this, uh, uh, this assumption. I was going to say, um, a lot of people enjoyed the Frostbite story DLC. Um, did you get a chance to watch anyone playing it or sharing their like thoughts on it? Yes, yes, definitely. So following on from that, um, specifically talking about the Xbox One version for a moment, has it done better than anticipated in terms of sales, but also player numbers as well? Yeah, it's according to our expectation. And uh, I would compare it to the sale numbers and player numbers that we had in Space Engineers on PC, on Steam, you know, in 2013 when we launched it on Early Access. So that is good. And uh, in other words, uh, yeah, according to expectations. And uh, what is also like a new thing for us is that Xbox opened up a new market for us. So that's a, a whole new group of customers that we need to take care of. And we'll be supporting uh, Space Engineers for Xbox as well as space engineers for PC. So before I continue on, um, COVID-19 has taken the world by storm, obviously, including the games industry itself. How is Keen Software House coping with the new changes, uh, such as working from home? Mm -hmm. I would say quite good. Uh, so we, uh, entire team, went to home office uh, right in the beginning. Actually, maybe a few days before the lockdowns in Czech Republic started. And um, uh, the net effect on team productivity and all these things, I think, was quite good. Uh, we didn't see, you know, like uh, loss in productivity or happiness of the people or any kind of these things. But it was also because we we're communicating quite transparently with the team from the beginning, making sure that people know what is going to happen or that, for example, there are not going to be any cuts in, in jobs or anything like that, because we knew that financially the COVID is not going to impact us at all. So there is no reason, you know, to do any, uh, to take any kind of measures like that. But we needed to make sure that also our team knows this. So we communicated quite a lot. Uh, we made a uh, few things like, for example, when uh, we, we hired a company that was able to move our people around in Prague in like nice and clean car, you know, so they, if they needed a car or like move somewhere, they didn't have to use uh, public transport or like Uber or anything like this. They could go with this company and everything was clean. So we did a few things like this just to make sure that people are not stressed about the situation. So the home office was good and also more than good, I would say, was what we learned from the home office is that we can actually work on home office and we can like we can be effective on remote collaboration. So we don't need to be in the office every day in order to collaborate. And for me, this was actually fantastic because for a long time, I was thinking that if we require people who join Keen uh, to be present in Prague, in our office, we're actually limiting ourselves to, let's say like 10 million people in Czech Republic and a couple million or more, but still just people who can move or who are willing to move to Prague. And so I was like, for a long time, I was thinking that it would be nice if you'll be able to hire people remotely for whoever they, they are without asking them to move permanently to Prague. And uh, without COVID, I think we wouldn't be able to do this experiment. Like there would be always something that people would feel that uh, 
it's better to be in the office, you know, and all these things. But now we learned that it actually doesn't matter. So what we started to do in Keen and also in Good AI is that uh, now when we are hiring people or searching for new people, we are saying that remote collaboration is possible. And we already hired a few people like this. And some of them or some of our new colleagues, I didn't even meet them yet, you know, physically. Oh, wow. kind, of, kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Never have happened before, but yeah, that's it. And uh, so now what is good is really that we have uh, access to much larger talent pool, you know, than before. This is, this is really fantastic, to be honest. And maybe it's kind of game changer for us and, uh, and for the future of space engineers, obviously. So this was also good. And then regarding the sales, and in the beginning, I actually thought that the COVID situation is not positively impacting our sales because also at the beginning of COVID, we released the Frostbite and, you know, the Xbox started to, to, to grow up. So there were some, of course, like we had much more revenue and everything, but I was thinking that it's probably because of these, you know, releases like Frostbite and Xbox. But then we did some like really detailed analysis and we found out that there is some kind of scissors between the countries and there are countries that were impacted by uh, COVID quite badly or they were like in heavy lockdowns, for example, France or Spain, obviously, or Italy, you know, and so on. And there were countries that were not so impacted or like the people were still going to work and just living normally, like uh, uh, South Korea or Taiwan or you know, these countries. And you could clearly see the curve of sales in those countries and you could see that in those countries like for example italy the sales are, like grow grew rapidly in france actually even doubled whereas in taiwan and you know south korea uh, they stayed in the original you know trend or like uh, original numbers so we could see these scissors uh, and uh, the, the explanation of this is that people who are on lockdowns of course they have more reasons to play games and obviously buy games. So uh, the COVID actually grew our revenue, at least for now, okay. quite a lot. It's actually something that is visible in the gaming market uh, for some games. And in some way, I mean, it's of course strange to admit this, you know, like considering the overall situation, but somewhere I read an analysis that only the like well-known IPs or well-known brands got this increase that kind of like the b or c brands didn't get increased so for example like uh you can have a bookstore or like a book company uh and if you're a good good book company your revenue grew let's say by 50 percent and if you're kind of like a b or c it didn't grow or maybe it even decreased so the fact that it grew for space engineers is some kind of sign you know that the brand is well received because people trust the brand and when they are in this situation they go and play space engineering so so uh there was this recognition that was good and also the money obviously is good of this i think we're seeing a lot more people playing space engineers and you know i'm the obviously the xbox version as well as they have a lot of <laughs> less things to do at the minute so Definitely good to hear. So speaking about that, naturally player feedback is a large focus for yourselves following the um, Xbox One release. And you've already mentioned that dedicated servers are a work in progress for the Xbox One following player feedback. But are there any other updates or improvements that players can expect? So the dedicated servers, I think, is uh, one of the biggest things that we are working on. And then also the scripts. Uh, but because there are some guidelines that Microsoft has for uploading, you know, like code or scripts to, to the games uh, that we need to follow, uh, we also need to be thinking about ways how to do this. So uh, some kind of script support is another big thing that should be also coming to, to Xbox, but I wouldn't go into details how it will end up because I think we are still kind of analyzing, you know, how that should work. So that's that. And uh, what is also important for us that we are still listening to what the community wants and what the community is saying and also on Xbox. So maybe people don't realize this, but we are actually following the, you know, this uh, support side where people are suggesting their things to space engineers and, and other channels. We are following them quite uh, thoroughly and analyzing what should be the next move or like how to help them, how to improve the quality of life in space engineers and all these things. 
Fantastic. And of course, um, for those wondering, I will link the support site down below to where people can go and give you feedback on the Xbox One version, and of course, for PC version as well. Uh, that'll be a link in the description for those wondering. So um, focusing on the main PC version for the moment, Keen have been very proactive in the last couple of weeks with hot fixes and patches, but can players expect any new major updates in the near future? Yeah, for sure. And uh, like our plan and the roadmap for this year and uh, then in the even in the next year is to make uh, one major update every quarter or so you know like and uh, if you look back like we have been doing that since the game uh, left early access there was uh, you know like lately there was frostbite and economy update and then other updates so uh, the plan is and the roadmap is to continue in this process so right now our team is actually heavily like just finalizing you know the next update great to hear um so obviously speaking about future updates and content for space engineers weapons and a potential combat update has been discussed before i remember we discussed it in december or november when we last spoke with the community also showing a keen interest in updating the weapon system of space engineers has there been any more progress on this from your side so unfortunately i cannot go into details much here but i would say that warfare stuff is top priority for us in the future. I think many will be relieved to hear that as well, because uh, we've mentioned it before, so I'm looking forward to that. But speaking about a potential weapons update again there, the community mod called Weapon Core has really shaken up the combat mechanics of Space Engineers and brought them out into a new light. Have you seen this? And if so, what do you think of it? Yeah, I've seen it. And also the, the mods uh, that were created thanks to this uh, Weapon Core mod. And we are always you know, happy when people are modding and uh, creating new things in space engineers. So that's very nice to see. And uh, we discussed the weapon core mod with our team. You know, uh, there are some nice suggestions. So all these will be somehow incorporated in the future warfare, whatever, you know, that we will do. Fantastic to hear. So Frostbite has been a great DLC for space engineers, expanding on the range of content even more. But can players expect space engineers to continue, um, you know, for content for the remainder of 2020? Obviously, you sort of just confirm that in the other question there. But is there any more you can sort of give us on what might be coming very soon? Yeah. So there is one little thing, one little teaser that uh, we can tell our players today. It's about uh, small, uh, small ship doors or small, small grid doors, and. Um, it's one thing, but there will be, of course, many other things. But I think this is a nice gift that we'll be giving quite soon to the players. And uh, as I said uh, before, uh, we are doing or we are planning to do uh, one quarter, uh, one update every quarter. And like one more detail about this is that uh, how we set it up in our team is that each update is handled by a different leader or by different producer. So. Uh, more people in the team get the chance to be a producer and basically see whatever you know it means what it is to manage the people the project to have some vision you know for that particular okay. update and uh, i actually to be honest i'm looking forward which of these leaders will uh, tell me that they like it and they want to be producers or which of them will tell me that Marek, thanks for trying, but I want to return to my <laughs> position <laughs> because, you know, it's a lot of, lot of stuff, I think, to manage something like that. So we will see. But again, I think what is good is that uh, more people will get a chance to, to, to try it and to get that kind of experience. And also we are in a position that we can afford it, you know, like uh, nothing major would like be destroyed or so. So I think that's very good. And we are still making sure that the quality is good. You know, there is QA team and, and everybody else. So that's that. And uh, yeah, so I think the next update will be quite soon and I hope people will enjoy it. I think it's great um, just on that point there of experimenting with team members and seeing who can like produce great quality content. Like you say there, it may be you find someone who is a really good producer and therefore what they can do in the future would be fantastic. I think that's a great way to experiment. Mm -hmm. So um, ultimately, many in the Space Engineers community are really wondering what is next for Keen Software House. We've had Space Engineers, we've had Medieval Engineers, and we've also now finally finished SE's Xbox Edition. While we have DLCs and other content updates to tie us over for a while, would you be able to confirm or at least hint if there's any bigger projects in the works behind the scenes? 
So I just want to like confirm that uh, the plan with Space Engineers 1 you know, continues and uh, we have a roadmap for this year and we'll be preparing roadmap for the next year with, with updates and everything. So basically like, we are committed to be developing and supporting Space Engineers 1 for foreseeable future. But we also already started to uh, like heavily recruit, you know, to get more people in our team and especially like experienced people to have bigger teams so that we can start looking also on the future. So instead of doing some kind of like incremental improvements to Space Engineers 1, I think it's a good idea to start thinking about some, let's say, revolutionary, revolutionary leap, you know, not just incremental, but like really making a huge, huge step mm. in terms of quality, features, and uh, and everything. And uh, But we need to do it properly, you know, so that's why we are building the team first and then we can uh, jump on that. But it's something that is, I think, very, like this idea of making a revolutionary leap in space engineers is something that is, I think people will enjoy it and also our team. So that, because I think space engineers deserves, let's say, uh, something huge, you know. I mean, when it, when Space Engineers came out, it set the ground for a fantastic game and really gave people the opportunity to what they've not done before in terms of blowing ships up, but building it and Vox deformation. So advancing on that since its 2013 release, like you say there, it has to be something revolutionary to capture that audience once again of, hey, look, this is what we can do and the power we have to do it, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then besides that, in, uh, in Good AI, you know, in our other company, uh, there is a small team that has been working on a prototype of a game. We call it AI game. And uh, it's a game where you player should be teaching AI agents. So you are in a role of a teacher and these agents then actually play the game or they do something in the game. You player, you shouldn't be doing the, you shouldn't be solving the challenges. You should be teaching the agents and then they are solving the challenges. So uh, we are prototyping this game as well. And uh, then somehow together with in software house should be released sometime you know in the future but this is another thing where that is also interesting uh, to us quite a lot and there can be also benefit for space engineers you know in this uh, learnable ai uh, maybe it can get somehow into space engineers in the future you know imagine the idea that you are teaching other npcs in the game what to do and then they are doing it so I guess building on to that one there, for a quick last little question, speaking of the AI game, uh, a lot of community members have always been pretty vocal about NPCs and AI inside of Space Engineers itself. Would you say that what good AI the company are doing right now, there could possibly be some sort of collaboration in the future where a game, either being Space Engineers itself or maybe a future version, could see some more revolutionary AI? Yeah, definitely. Like I would say when I was speaking about some revolutionary leap or so uh, for Space Engineers, NPCs and AIs is one of those things I think that are really must have. Fantastic. Okay, so let's talk about languages and localization there. Um, this has been discussed by the community a bit before, but can you tell us if there's anything extra coming in terms of that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so one thing is that we are very happy and uh, glad that uh, community is localizing the game and has been since the beginning. So there are many, uh, many languages that Space Engineers has been localized into and actually funny fact is that when we released Space Engineers in 2013, I think it was maybe a matter of days that people started to localize. We had uh, some website for this, it was called Get Localization or something like this and people could collaboratively uh, localize individual sentences. And the nice thing about that website was that you could see almost like a leaderboard, like a real-time leaderboard and you could see that for example Spanish is 50 percent i don't like hungarian 30 percent czech 60 percent and so on so people were even fighting like uh, in in a matter of hours you know who will finish the the localization so <laughs> that was it was really funny and then of course like over the years people had to keep updating you know the, there was more more text texts more sentences and everything so people had to update it and few of the languages we selected and uh, get them got them uh, localized translated by professionals who just need to spend more time you know making sure that the language 
is clear that it actually fits in the GUI and all these things. So what we are planning to do in the uh, next few uh, weeks, months, very soon, we'll be, we'll be introducing official localization for Italian, uh, Brazilian, Portuguese, French, Spanish, and uh, German languages. And then, of course, there are already some existing languages that Space Engineers is localized to. So, and this will come to PC, obviously, and Xbox. And uh, hopefully, it will make some more people happy. That's great to hear. I think a lot of people, who, um, we've seen it before in the community where people have been speaking about, uh, speaking about translating to their own language and such. This is great. So, Mark, it's been a pleasure sitting down and talking with you, as always, and learning some interesting things about how Space Engineers is doing and what might be, you know, in the future for the game. Um, so, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jack. And uh, I just want to uh, ask people if they have any idea how to improve Space Engineers or features they would love to see in the game or bug report or anything like this, basically any kind of feedback that they want to give us, please head over to Kin Software House support portal. You will find the link in the description and post your idea and uh, vote uh, for an existing idea. And your votes really count. Like we are really uh, checking, you know, those submissions and uh, based on the votes and everything, deciding, you know, what should be the next move with Space Engineering. So your votes count and your feedback is super important for us. So thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mark. A massive thank you to Mark once again for taking the time out of his day to sit down with me for this interview. I do hope you all enjoyed the video and what you learned from myself actually talking with Mark, and hopefully it's giving you an insight into what's hopefully coming soon to Space Engineers, especially that little teaser there. I can't wait for the next major update. Do let me know what you thought down below in the comment section. I try and do these interviews with Mark and members of the Keen Software House team every now and again, just to give you guys a bridge to, you know, the developers and what they're doing, as I think it's really important that we learn, you know, what's coming soon to the game, uh, and also just, you know, a more of a natural talking point as well. I think it's just kind of cool, and I also like sitting down with Keen and actually doing interviews as well. Hopefully you'll appreciate them, but do let me know what you think down below in the comment section. For now, I've been Captain Jack. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if you're new around here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll, of course, catch you next time.